using something that you have in your possession to earn more money and to keep more money. That is what we're gonna talk about today. What am I referring to? Your income statement. No matter if you are a new business or you've been in business for seven years and you consider yourself seasoned or veteran, you should use your income statement because it's gonna give you key clues into the success of your business. It's gonna show you if you're wasting money, if you're earning more money, if you're keeping more money, and exactly how to master your money. And that is what it is all about. I am Octavia Connor, your future fractional CFO. My whole goal is to help six figure plus service-based entrepreneurs manage and master their finances so that they say yes to profits in business. I wanna to talk to you today about your income statement. Every business should have an income statement. Your income statement is often called your profit and loss statement. These two words are used interchangeably, but they're referring to the same report, okay? When you start to create your income statement, it's going to show you your revenue, your expenses, and your profitability position, okay? And of course, you wanna make sure that you're profitable. But it'll also identify if you have a loss, right? Your income statement is going to show this information over a specific period of time. And so that period of time could be monthly, it could be quarterly, it could even be yearly, all right? In addition to not only showing this key information over a specific period of time, if you are a particular business where you have multiple locations, you can pull your income statement for each location. If you wanna know the profitability of a project, a job, or a client, you can pull your income statement for those particular areas as well. The income statement is such an important statement, but it's not the only one. I want you to stay tuned for other episodes as I go over the balance sheet and the cash flow statement, okay? But you wanna start here with creating your income statement. These are the key things that you will know when you very first start creating your income statement. Now, let's create a sample income statement, okay? And so again, the very first thing you're gonna start with is your revenue. So you wanna list all of the ways that your company is earning money. Maybe you have service A, service B, and product D. You would list them on your income statement. And let's say service A earned $10,000, service B earned $20,000, product D earned $10,000 for this particular period of time. Let's say this particular period of time is May of 2020. 2035, right? So we listed all the revenue. Now you're gonna total your revenue up. This is the first part of creating that income statement. So what's that, 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, right? So that's $40,000 that your business earned for May of 2035, but you're not done. Next, you're gonna list your COGS. So your COGS are your Cost of goods and services sold. These are your direct costs. These are your out-of-pocket costs. When your services increase, so let's say that you sign a new client, oftentimes your costs are increased. Why? Because your direct cost, your out-of-pocket cost could be labor. It could be supplies. It could be materials right? These are all going to be affected by the more services that you have, the more products that you sell. These can all be affected. And let's say for this particular time that your labor cost was 
$1,000, your supplies were $1,000, and your materials were $3,000, okay? Now, you want to total up your cost. That's three, four, five. So your total cost for this particular time is $5,000. Once you've done these two parts here, now you have something called your gross profit or your gross income. Okay? Gross income, we're gonna put profit in parentheses. To get your gross income, you would take your total revenue minus your total cost. For this example, it is $35,000. All right? This is top line. We're not even done. But this is the top part of your income statement, okay? When you think about your gross profit, you want to also factor in your margins because that's so important. Important, all right your margins as a service-based business you want this to be 60% or higher if it's less than that as a service-based business you may not be pricing your services for profit you may be spending too much money on your cogs you may not be selling enough like something is going on because your gross profit is lower than it should be and so you're not going to have enough money potentially for your everyday operating expenses which is the next category of your income statement so once you put these together i'm gonna put your operating expenses over here and then you list them. Now your operating expenses, again, is the everyday expenses that you have, whether you have one client or 1,000 clients, you're gonna have these everyday operating expenses. So some of them could be rent, it could be office supplies. Now there's a difference between supplies, let me be clear, this is the supplies needed for the jobs, for the services. This is just everyday supplies, pencils, paper, things like that for your company, okay? Get that clear. It could be and should be your CFO, and it could be marketing. You can have others like utilities um, and any other expenses that you need to operate your business on a daily basis. For this example, we're gonna say rent was a thousand, office supplies was a thousand, CFO was a thousand, marketing was two thousand. All right. So now you total your operating expenses. Okay. So it's two, three, four, five. Five thousand dollars. Make that five a little better. This five is ugly, y'all. Okay. So two thousand here, five thousand here. All right, so now we got three important categories. We have total revenue, total cogs, we have four categories, actually, your gross profit and your total operating expenses. Now that you're here, you're going to now have a category called total operating income. The way to figure this out is you take your gross profit of 35,000 for this example minus your total operating expenses of $5,000 that's going to leave you with a total operating income of $30,000 okay all right now once you have that you also have things called or category called non-operating activities all right because your income statement it shows you your operating activities and your non-operating activities. Those income and expenses that you have that are not a part of your everyday operating, okay? It is not needed to operate your business. Some of these you can't help but to have them. So for example, you may have interest income. And you may have interest expenses, okay? And let's say for the purpose of this example, your interest income you brought in was $5,000. Your interest expenses were $10,000, all right? That means you're now gonna have a category called total 
non-operating, and you are at these two up only, and for this example, that's a negative $5,000, okay? So, let me put non-operating here. So now you have certain important categories, right? Stay with me. Once you get down here, now you're able to see what your net income for this period of time is. And so you would actually take your total operating income plus or minus the result of your non-operating income. For this example, your non-operating income came out to a negative $5,000. So you take your total operating income minus $5,000. That's going to give you $25,000. And so you earn in revenue $40,000. By the time you had all of your operating and non-operating expenses, your net income came out to $25,000. Now for this particular example, you absolutely was able to say yes to profits, which is good. But now that your income statement is created and you're like, I want my profits to be larger. Because if you are a service-based business and you're looking at your margins, this should actually be as a floor number, a floor number, not the ultimate goal. This should actually be 20% or higher for a net profit margin. Okay? All right? But you're like, I want to get this higher because this is a floor. This is not the starting point. This is not the ultimate goal. This is where you should be at a minimum. Okay, but at least you were able to say yes to profits. But we want to get it higher. Okay, so since we want to get it higher, this is how you use your income statement to manage and master your income, your finances. What you want to do is you want to look at how you spent your money. Okay, how you spent your money. And you want to determine for every way money has exited your business, you want to determine the ROI. ROI stands for the return on the investment. That return should come back in three ways. One, money. You spent money on something, you got more money back. Two, time. You spent money on something, you got more time back added to your calendar. Now you can go and do other things. Hopefully the other things that you're doing as it relates to your business will bring in or money, okay? The third way, you spent money or something and you receive more knowledge, more expertise. And because you receive more expertise, now you can charge more for your services and it shows you how to make what? More money. So one of the things you wanna do is say, okay, I spent in labor $1,000. Did this yield more money? I spent in marketing $2,000. What was my ROI, right? I spent on a CFO $1,000. Did I learn something that made me more of an expert, that gave me more time back, that positioned me to have more money? That's how you determine if what you're spending is actually yielding a return on that investment. It should be something you should be able to write down and you should be able to see over time. And if you're really savvy with mastering your money, you would determine the ROI before you actually spend the money. Hello, somebody. That's really mastering your money, okay? Okay? So... That is one way to use your income statement to master your money. Another way, let's say you're like, okay, I have no way to decrease my expenses. They are what they are. They are what they are. Some businesses get to that point. If that is the case, then I want you to then focus on your revenue. You need to focus on your revenue because you need to think about, am I pricing my services for profit? Am I selling enough of the services? This is my main service. Is this correct? Should this be the one that's bringing in the most money? If so, do I need to put more marketing towards this service to make it where it earns even more money? 
if it goes in the opposite direction where you're losing money. Well, why did I lose money? What happened and how can I prevent that? Here's what you have to understand. If you have a solid financial foundation, your business is going to leave you clues. Your goal is, as the business owner is to be so fiscally responsible or working with a CFO that's so fiscally knowledgeable and responsible that they're able to read what the financial language is that is being presented on your income statement and they're able to use this information to grow your business. That's the importance of having a solid financial foundation in place and making sure that you're using this information to take your company to the next level. Because every business speaks a specific financial language, okay? This is the way that you can use it to make sure that you become massively successful in your business, right? In addition to that, another strategy, if you're using a budget, okay? Now, if you don't have a budget, download the Cash Flow Mastery Toolkit. It's a free plug and play template that you can use in order to create a budget in your business. Your budget is your income statement. That's all it is, but it's a plan. It's I'm planning to earn this amount. I'm planning to spend this amount. I'm planning to have this net profit, right? And when you have that plan, Every single month, you should be comparing your budget versus your actual. And if you see that you've overspent in certain areas, that could be a clue that you need to decrease that. We're not keeping up with the Joneses in business. We're being profitable in business, right? And so if you're looking at your budget versus your actual, you can see where you're overspending or where you're not earning enough. And so now you can make the changes. Again, success leaves clues when your foundation, your financial foundation is in order. And that starts with having your income statement, your balance sheet, and your statement of cash flow in place for your business, all right? So definitely create your income statement. And I'm actually going to show you how an income statement looks that you don't see my chicken scratch here, okay? So... This is an income statement. Matter of fact, let me do this a little better. Let's put it up here. So that way you don't see the, the words there. So give it a few minutes. So this is actually how an income statement will look. So you see you have your revenue, your sales. You have your cost of goods and services sold here. You have your operating expenses and other things like depreciation and interest expense. These are all under non-operating expenses. And then you have your net income, okay? This is how the income statement will look. And so you want to make sure that even for your company, you're creating an income statement that will allow you to earn more money and to keep more money. So let me put this back up. Your income statement, okay? The goal is to be profitable. The goal is for you to say yes to profit, all right? And so in order to do that, you need to look at your revenue. You need to look at your expenses. And you need to always compare. And you need to always analyze. It is your responsibility to have a profitable, successful business, but the only way to do that is to, again, let me put that down here, have a solid financial foundation, okay? And you're only going to get that by creating your income statement. Now, this is one money move. I want you to make sure you join me for my upcoming masterclass because I'm going to show you how to make more money moves in your business, all right? By using not only your financial reports, but other things that you have right here in your hands. It's easier than you think. So I want you to go to sayyestoprofits.com slash masterclass and register for my upcoming masterclass. I am going to show you how to make money moves in your business so that you scream, say yes to profits, all right? This is Octavia Connor, your future fractional CFO. Until we speak, say yes to profits. Toodles!
Thank you for watching the Say Yes to Profit show. Make sure you download the resources given in this episode and follow me on Instagram, Octavia Connor CFO. And always remember, say yes to profits.